Hello students, in this video, I will be discussing the topic of the urinary system, the micturition reflex. Now what is a reflex? A reflex is an instantaneous involuntary action in response to a stimulus. And this reflex, it is mediated via a, by a reflex arc in the spinal cord. Now what is a micturition reflex? Micturition reflex is a reflex through which the bladder empties itself. That is the urine flows out of the bladder. Now this though, this uh, micturition reflex is a reflex, but in adults it is controlled voluntary, voluntarily to a large extent. To understand the micturition reflex, first we should know about a little bit about the physiological anatomy of the urinary bladder. Now what is urinary bladder made up of? The wall of the urinary bladder, it is made up of detrusor muscle. Now this detrusor muscle, it contracts and relaxes in response to the stimulus. So it's the detrusor muscle which is actually responsible for the emptying of the bladder. Now the urethra, there, there are two sphincters, the internal urethral sphincter and the external urethral sphincter. These two sphincters, they guard the opening of the urethra and they guard the flow of the urine. The internal urethral sphincter, it is made up of smooth muscle and it is involuntary in action. Whereas the external urethral sphincter, that is made up of striated muscle or the skeletal muscle. And it is voluntary in action. So that is about the physiological anatomy of the uh, bladder, which you should know. The next is the innervation of the bladder. The innervation is, that is the nerve supply of the bladder. The urinary bladder and the internal sphincter, both are supplied by the sympathetic nerves and the parasympathetic nerves. The parasympathetic nerves are the pelvic nerves and the sympathetic nerves are the hypogastric nerves. Now this pelvic nerve, it also has the sensory fibers which take the stimulus from the stretch receptors of the gallbladder as well as the internal urethral sphincter. And the third part is the external urethral sphincter. Now that external urethral sphincter, it is supplied by the pudendal nerve. So the wall of the bladder the internal urethral sphincter, both are supplied by the pelvic nerve and the external urethral sphincter, that is supplied by the pudendal nerve. So this is about the innervation of the bladder. Now what are the characteristics of its sympathetic supply? The sympathetic supply is by the hypogastric nerve. Now what is this sympathetic supply doing? This hypogastric nerve is called nerve of filling. Why is it called nerve of filling? Because it relaxes the urine wall of the bladder that is it relaxes the detrusor muscle and contracts the internal urethral sphincter that is why it is responsible for filling of the bladder that's why it is called the nerve of filling i hope this is clear that hypogastric nerve is called the nerve of filling that is it allows the urinary bladder to fill because at that time the internal urethral sphincter is closed and the wall of bladder is Relax, that is the detrusor muscle is relaxed. On the other hand, the other nerve, nerve is the pelvic nerve, which gives a parasympathetic nerve supply to the bladder. This pelvic nerve is the, called the nerve of micturition and it is responsible for the outflow of the urine. How? Because it is responsible for the contraction of the detrusor muscle and opening of the external urethral sphincter. So how this, these nerves are going to work? Then third nerve we talked about was the pudendal nerve, which supplies the external urethral sphincter. Now what is the function of this pudendal nerve? Whenever this pudendal nerve is active, what does it do? It keeps the external urethral sphincter in construct, constricted or closed state. That is the urine will not be able to move out. So that is the function of pudendal nerve. So at the time of maturation, this pudendal nerve is blocked. Only then only the external urethral, urethral sphincter opens and the urine is moved outside. So since this pudendal nerve has somatic nerve fibers, that is why its control is voluntary. It is a voluntary control. Now we will talk about the filling of the urinary bladder. Now how the urinary bladder gets filled? It gets like drop to drop, it's getting filling filled. Every 10 or 20 seconds, there is a peristaltic wave in the ureters which brings the urine from the kidneys to the urinary bladder. So it keeps on filling. 
whenever it's when it's nearly 150 milliliter of urine is there in the uh, bladder then what happens first sense of uh, this urge of feel or first sense of feeling occurs to the person but when once it is filled to 400 ml when the urinary bladder is filled to 400 ml then this uh, the stretch receptors in the wall of the urinary bladder they get stimulated and at this point the mixturation reflex is initiated now we will talk about the pathway of this mixture mixturation reflex now first when there first of all there is filling of the urinary bladder now filling of the urinary bladder how much filling about 400 milliliter what does it do it will stimulate the stretch receptors in the wall of the bladder because the bladder is distended now now what will they do they will stimulate the pelvic nerves now these pelvic nerves they will take the stimulus to the spinal cord now what will happen over there through through the sensory nerve fibers earlier also i told you the pelvic nerve has sensory fibers which can detect the which can carry the impulses from the stretch receptors in the wall of the urinary bladder so when the urinary bladder is stretched these pelvic fibers they will take the impulse to the spinal cord now a reflex arc is produced in the spinal cord and the spinal cord is sending the motor signals uh, motor signals to the through the motor fibers of the pelvic nerve now what will happen now the motor fibers of the pelvic nerve they will send the signals and the parasympathetic activity will start parasympathetic activity of the pelvic nerve what will it do it will stimulate the detrusor muscle the trusor muscle you remember it's a smooth involuntary muscle present in the wall of the bladder now that muscle will contract the detrusor muscle will contract and the internal urethral sphincter will relax now the urine will pass to the proximal urethra from the urinary bladder now there here you have to note a bit be careful over here the efferent impulses now they are given to the spinal cord and from the spinal cord they will travel to the higher centers of the brain through which tracts through the spinothalamic tracts they will reach the higher centers of the brain now what are the higher centers of the brain we have two two types of higher centers of the brain the facilitatory center and the inhibitory center now what is the facilitatory center it is the pontine region and the hypothalamus and the inhibitory center is the midbrain so these are the higher centers now with these efferent pulses they have reached the higher centers of the brain now the brain stem will, will produce two types of signals either it will say to micturate or it will say not to micturate now when the signal from the brain stem is to micturate what will happen the pudendal nerve is blocked why this nerve needs to be blocked because pudendal nerve is doing what it is constricting the external urethral sphincter now once this pudendal nerve is blocked the external urethral sphincter will open it will relax and the urine will flow out because abhi tak what was there our bladder is ohad also contracted and internal urethral sphincter is open so urine has reached the that point that whenever the external urethral sphincter will open the urine will go out the contraction of detrusor how is it helping the detrusor is contracting it's pushing the urine downward by its contractions now on the other hand if the higher center says not to micturate then what will happen the sympathetic efferents they will stimulate the they will get stimulated and what is this sympathetic part doing the sympathetic part is saying no to micturate the external urethral sphincter will not open moreover what will happen the detrusor muscle will also muscle will also relax and the internal urethral sphincter will also close so one will not be able to micturate so this is all about the micturation reflex so in the, in the end i'll just sum up the main things micturation reflex is actually what it's a reflex reflex is what it's an almost it's an involuntary instantaneous but this is to a lot of extent controlled voluntary 
voluntarily because external urethral sphincter is a voluntary sphincter. Now how does the things start? How it starts? It starts from the detrusor muscle. Detrusor muscle, what it does? Gets, gets expanded. Stretch receptors get stimulated. They send the impulses to the or the our reflex arc. Where does it stimulate? To the spinal cord. From the spinal cord comes back to where? To the detrusor and the internal urethral, the urethral sphincter. Detrusor contracts, internal urethral sphincter relax and open. Now this now see here the point. The point is that the impulses now go to the higher centers of the brain. And the higher centers of brain are controlling whether you are will be maturating or not. If the higher centers of the brain want you to maturate, they will block the pudendal nerve. So and when the pudendal nerve is blocked, the external retro sphincter will also open and the urine will flow out. This is all about the maturation reflex. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any queries, you can ask me. The my contact number will be displayed on the screen. You can ask me anytime. Thank you students. All the best.